right, y'all. Welcome back to Practice the Pitch. I think this is episode. We've done a few. This is a. We've done a few of them. Welcome, Lee. How's it going? How are you? Good. How are you, Nathan? Good, man. Okay, so I want you to tell the viewers just what you do and what, like, where you're working and and who you're working with, and and primarily, like, what are you excited about right now that you're doing? Sure. sure. So I, I'm an agent at Odyssey Touring. It's a new company that was launched right at the beginning of 2021. We represent a lot of Americana acts and indie rock acts. And besides that, I'm also a local promoter. I've been the talent buyer at a number of small uh, rooms in Nashville for the last five years. And I still do some independent promoting, but mainly I do booking for uh, my roster. And uh, currently on my roster right now, the indie rock world, there's a new band called Walter that I'm representing. They have a new record coming out tomorrow. It's really exciting on Side Hustle Records. And then um, I represent Nordista Freeze, Thelma and the Sleaze, and the Minx, all out of Nashville. Then on the Americana side, I represent Chuck Mead of BR549, cool. uh, Jeremy Pinnell, and uh, J.P. Harris. So kind of all honky yep. tonk Americana acts. Excited about all sorts of stuff. I'm excited to see what 2021 will bring and see the return of live music. I know we will yep. see it in some level for sure yep. and I'm, I'm really interested to see how we roll it out effectively and safely for the summer which i think is the first big step i love it i love it i i am excited about it as well i'm excited about new opportunity i'm excited about new ideas and new ways of doing stuff and it will return and it will return strong and you know i think it will bring it'll kind of be a crazy time but i think it'll bring new opportunity that wasn't there before and yeah. just revitalize some markets that maybe weren't happening it, it totally will you know it'll be really interesting to see how kind of the streaming side of it plays into the reintroduction of live music i mean at first everyone's obviously going to be really excited to go out and be with their friends in person and see shows but you know as much as we're all tired of those live streams they will play an integral part in how bands reach audience members even when they're performing in person from from now on so it'll be it'll be from cool to on. see how venues and bands yeah. yeah i love I, I love that thought we i had a conversation with an artist about prepping their touring especially with the work we do in super developing artists you know really first steps in building their fan base and using live streams to connect with artists in other towns that you plan to tour in you can do that months in advance by going live on instagram together and introducing each other's fans you know yeah, it's, just, totally. it's just a new paradigm that is going to really benefit i i think so too and whatever i i know that maybe in the past there was some looking down their nose on going live too often but as you said you really can't go enough i think nordisa freeze who i work with is a really good example of that he live streams everything on insta even yeah. you know you know like uh for example he did uh he did an in studio with lightning 100 last year or two cool. years ago probably and granted it was on the air but he live streamed it all and i'm pretty sure he had more viewers on the live stream than yeah. the, the actual terrestrial air, airways which is awesome you know and That's he awesome. does it to connect with people all the time you know use it's those great. tools use, those use tools. the use the tools and don't overthink it just just, right. just connect and go and play music like and treat it like you're around a campfire just play totally. some songs i love it man so in in the work that uh you're doing this you know practice the pitch is the title of this show I, I think it's kind of it's funny because sometimes I think artists have to practice not pitching more than they need to yeah. practice pitching but was when's the last time you were pitched on something maybe it was as an agent maybe it was as a promoter but it but it got you and you were like oh I'm I'm booking this this is happening and yeah were pitched on it. it it happens all the time uh you know for as a as a talent buyer it ha in a smaller way it happens every day you know every time you send an email back you've you've won the artist has won that pitch but you know <laughs> as 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 an agent really it was this band that i was talking about waltzer you know i uh when when things kind of shut down i emailed all the talent all the talent buyers at venues that i liked and asked for recommendations of local bands that oh, i thought cool presentation you know it was just a good way to see where people's heads were at and uh molly from the empty bottle in chicago sent me a list of like five or six bands um, yeah. and uh i reached out to all all the ones i like i reached i liked i reached out to all their managers and just said hey when touring comes back around uh let me know when this band's planning to come through nashville i'd love to promote a show and see what's up with it and dan walter's manager said that's awesome but you know really i want to talk about what's going on now walter has this idea that we're implementing and the first show is going to be next week. I'd love for you to tune in. And basically what it was, was an idea called Waltzer TV, where Sophie, who is the lead of the 
band puts together like skits okay. and edits it together with other bands live content so basically everyone sends in a four minute live performance and she edits it together for a 45 minute program yeah she, not a live stream it's not it's a tv a, show yeah. through a venue and you know it was just so good and the music was so good i was like i have to be involved you know and that, yeah. that was uh it was a solid pitch because they had something active going on yeah so so it was a reactive pitch though too i think that's super great for artists to know is that you're out there you're talking to people that they probably don't know you're talking to like you know does somebody think that a nashville agent is reaching out to like a, a buyer in chicago saying hey what do you got going on but that's happening totally and then you're reaching out and it's like it's taking advantage of hey no let's let's talk now let's go now right. i love that man that's a good story and i think a, a good learning all right let's listen to some music i'm gonna pull this up here all right first up we're going to listen to tom galloway elevator pitch for tom galloway he says born in georgia raised in texas currently writing songs in nashville tennessee galloway combines roots of folk bluegrass classic country and rock to form a unique blend of expression and storytelling and here we go without further ado tom galloway our due time <laughs> was Tom Galloway. Tell us about this, Lee. What are you thinking? I really enjoy this song. And to be honest, I have booked Tom Galloway based on this video. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, he's it worked. It worked. It was definitely included. It was definitely included on a pitch to me when I worked at the country or the local. And I definitely booked him for a couple shows. Yeah, that's great. Um, there's a couple of really good things about it. And there's a couple of things that I wish were better. You know, one good thing is when you're trying to book a show, it's important to have live content. Yes. Not to send music videos because I'm buying the live show. I'm not buying your music video. Yes. So that's always a huge plus and it has to be recorded well and edited well. The only problem I have with this video is just a little bit of the audio. It seems like it's captured house audio. Mm. It's not directly from the board. And that's not that big of a deal. Like I'm used to listening to live music. I can hear through it. But, you know, I think bands should spend a lot of time and effort getting a really good, highly produced live recording, even if it's in the studio. As long as it looks professional and it sounds good, that's worth your weight in gold as far yeah. as doing live shows. I, I love it. I totally agree. I love that you booked it off of this video. I love that Tom submitted this uh, to Practice the Pitch. And for those views, viewers who are tuning in, you can go to practicethepitch.com and my team is going through everything that gets submitted. All right. And and then our, our producers are, are actually curating what comes in for the guests that we have on. So this is perfect. And you can kind of see that this is happening because, you know, our producers are listening to stuff. They go, hey, Lee might like this. We'll get guess what? Lee did like it. He already booked it. So that's the point of practice. The pitch is to get the music in front of our guests in a way where they can give some feedback, but also maybe find something that they, that they like. So practice the pitch.com, send your submissions in. I want to touch on what you just said about prioritizing that high quality live video. What tends to happen, I think, is that the priorities get a little mixed up in that the music video feels like if you're working on a budget, you know, yeah. the music 
music video feels like priority for all the marketing and stuff like that to get the track across the line. So it's it's really important to like think about your goals in order. Like uh-huh. goals in order. If the first goal is to be playing shows, the first priority should probably be a really solid live video that shows that you can get on stage and do it. So it just kind of depends. It's hard to prioritize, but yeah, audio making sure you're getting it mixed and and stuff like that yeah that's an easy thing you know and honestly i'm not trying to say as exactly what you're saying music videos are important for your brilliant right. artists it's more important right. than a live video but you do have to prioritize if you want someone to book you live they need yeah. to see you live yeah and now there's so many resources out there now a lot of it comes with the live streaming yep. that you don't have to be in a professional studio or oh no, yeah you like the basement east like that's another uh, the video is at the basement east which is obviously helpful because it's yeah. a cool venue that buyer other buyers know but you know as long as it's could be in your studio as long as it's recorded well and high quality yeah it's cool man it's a new time it's a new era there's a lot of new tools tricks and and resources for artists and so you just have to get clever and then just i, I think the other thing is start to really put forward what the objective of the content piece is within your community and through any team that you have if you've hired a like management management consulting team or if you have a manager or just anybody of just saying like hey how is this piece of content in context to what it's being used for you know and making sure because you know something that might be great for instagram or tiktok or whatever may not achieve like the objectives on something else but that's great feedback all right we're gonna jump into we're gonna jump into our zero to 60 featured guest the southern gothic when we come back so stay tuned and thanks for tuning in when we come back the southern gothic all right welcome back to practice the pitch thanks everybody for tuning in new viewers don't forget to jump over to practice the pitch.com you can submit music at any time we are announcing uh new guests on the instagram and facebook page so if you catch it in time you can submit specifically for a new guest that's coming on or you can just submit at any time we are listening to everything and curating everything right now it's time for the zero to 60 featured artist the southern gothic connor welcome to it. Hey, Tell thanks us a so much, bit. man. Set this piece up for us that we're going to watch. Yeah, about it. absolutely. So uh, the Southern Gothic has been around for a real long time. Uh, we took a pretty long hiatus when I moved to Nashville and I was working on writing songs for other artists. And this is our, uh, this new EP is our first new thing that we've put out since 2015. So okay. um, yeah, so it's really just us kind of getting back and seeing who we are now. And, you know, it's a little bit different than, than when last we left you. But okay. this is, yeah, this is the first video from our our new EP this uh the song's called Past Midnight. All right, here we go, Past Midnight. The clock keeps ticking. We keep talking. Don't know where this is heading. But I know one thing. You could be home right now. You could have checked out, went back to your couch You could be whining now, instead of losing sleep It's a little past midnight, must be something going alright You're still sitting by my side, burning moonlight We keep this thing going on and on Your lips fit real good against my lips It's like we're on our own island I could spend my whole life loving you past midnight Clock's still ticking And drink's still pouring It's getting later and later and later But we just ignore it You could be home right now You could have checked out Went back to your couch You could be winding down Instead of losing sleep It's a little past midnight Must be something going alright You're still sitting by my side Burning moonlight We keep this thing going on and on 
All right, and that was Past Midnight by the Southern Gothic. Lee, take us in. Tell us a little bit about what you think about this track and, and the song, and, and then we'll chat about it. I enjoyed the tune, man. Good work. Oh, really, thank you. Really, really catchy. There is uh, there's like a bridge pre-chorus thing at the end of the, towards the end of the song that really caught my attention. I don't know why. It was just it was a good break. But, you know, yeah, great song. Lends it, it, it sounds like it would lend itself to a live performance really well. I can, I can imagine how it would sound. Now, we were talking a little bit earlier about what to put in, in a pitch to an agent as far as as a video goes and uh, I was saying that really making sure that you have a high quality live song in the pitch is really important but you know I think this is an exception as as far as you should always send a video to so they know what your recorded content sounds like and I thought this was really good because I got a view of the whole band I got to see you guys playing together I know what the product look, look, looks like I thought it was a really solid video and you know I personally prefer videos where there's not a whole bunch of extra storyline there's just enough storyline there that it's not just you guys guys playing but it is also you guys playing which i want to see i love it awesome well yeah i'm glad we hit those uh those right notes in in this case yeah i i love the i love the tune i love the aesthetic of the video as well and it and it sets the tone and i love the project everything's rounded out right like seeing the seeing the artwork with it and stuff like the package and everything is the as a whole comes together i think in this video and i think that's a big thing for presenting that professionalism of being able to say like hey we've connected all these dots just signals that that's what the experience is going to be like working like professionally right like this is a this is an act that connects all the dots and is thinking about everything together and 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 i love that connor tell us a little bit about where the band's headed kind of give us that pitch of like what what's next where are you headed and and what you're trying to do yeah so you know uh what you said a moment ago just about like kind of having all the pieces together and i think that this ep was about making sure we could still put the pieces back together, you know, as, as a group. And, and you know, we got some new members and, and things are a little different. And, uh, you know, over the years, my writing has become different. Uh, you know, I've pulled more kind of pop influences from when I was a kid, you know, kind of the stuff that made me want to be a musician and, uh, you know, not strictly rock and roll guitar music. So, um, you know, putting, this was about this, putting the pieces back together and finding out where we fit in the world. As it turns out, in this case, it's been doing really well in the UK and it's starting to kind of uh, branch out to uh, Europe, you know, on a wider scale, we're, we're kind of trying to foster that. And uh, while still kind of trying to figure out a way to reactivate the the base that we had when we were, you know, active here in the States. Yeah. You know, having having the pieces all together helps me a lot when I am pitching a, a booking agent because I'm asking for a lot more money than a lot of people who they've never heard of. And they haven't heard of me either, you know, but I'm coming in at a way higher price point And they're like, well, why should I do this when Jim Bob and the Gators down the street will do it for 500 bucks? I'm like, well, have a look. This is what my record looks like. This is my video. You know, this is our billboard history. This is, you know, our, you know, these are our sponsors, so on and so so forth and having you know having all of that on board or at least you know moving toward that right now has been kind of our our main focus so that uh we can sort of justify that uh that veteran rate rather than the than the new rate man i i think that's great earlier what we were talking about too was knowing your goals having your goals in place and then acting upon them and i think what your voice in there is hey we have a financial goal that we need to meet when we go out to do work so we need to set ourselves up to meet that goal Lee what are some thoughts that you have there especially in your work you've worked both sides of yeah. being an alibi buyer being the agent so you've been like no I'm not going to pay you that rate but then you've also been the agent being like get me that rate you know so give yeah. us some feedback on that it hit, you hit the nail on the head it's it's about presenting it in a way so that the buyer knows that you are going to take the show seriously and you that's what justifies the higher rate you know it's it's the I can get the people there this is going to be marketed correctly and the video just does a really good job of that is we're a professional operation this is a good song we're gonna we're gonna do the show correctly you know and i think that's that's really you hit, you hit it on the head with that love it man i i always you know I always want to take the time, see if there's any questions that you have just about, you know, next steps. Maybe it's uh, pandemic related, maybe it's uh, career related or whatever, but anything that's been on your mind, Connor, that you want to put out into the universe. Uh, yeah, I guess for me, you know, booking club gigs, booking bar gigs, uh, even even ones that are, you know, higher paying than, than some others is something I've always kind of been able to do. I, you know, I, I learned at a young age, I started playing in bars at a young age and I learned what they wanted to hear 
year and what I needed to show up and accomplish after that first gig, you know, first to get the first gig and then what I needed to do to, to keep that gig and, and, and make it a regular thing. Something I've never been able to really connect with is the festival scene. And I'd love to be involved more with that, you know, post pandemic, you know, it seems like during the pandemic, that's one of the few things that might still be possible is a show out in the middle of a field, you know, versus, you know, being in a, in a warehouse somewhere. So, you know, but I, I'd love to be more involved. I'd love to be playing, you know, dozens of festivals a year, but I've never figured out what the trick is for, you know, making those, you know, inroads. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Yeah. Lee, what are you doing for festivals? I mean, that is the most, that is the most difficult question in the world. And the, okay. you know, a lot of, in a lot of ways, that's what sets agents apart is the ability to land these festivals. One of the reasons is because they're good gigs, you know, they're high paying, high traffic gigs, and they're really relationship based, but you know, it's just like anything else. It's about having connection with the buyer. You know, all of these festivals, all the big Bonnaroo talk, it's controlled by this, it's controlled by that is true on a level, but there is a person behind every single team. Uh, I was on the phone with Eric Gilbert, who is the buyer for Tree Fort Festival, which is a South by Southwest style festival in Boise, Idaho. And he told me he looked, uh, it was yesterday. He said, I, I watch every single submission we get, you know, there's thousands of submissions and I choose it based on liking the music and then looking at their social media and making sure that they what they're doing in their local community aligns with what we're about which is bringing cool music and being active in the community so that's the best thing you can always do is just make sure that you have that you are authentically yourself and you're authentically putting out there that buyers can vibe with it i mean it's just like you know you know it's just like that with a with a club gig you know you have to there's really one person you're trying to convince that you're doing a good job the other thing too i'd say about it you know there's all sorts of different levels of festivals we all get hung up on these premier A plus festivals that are really hard to get onto. I mean, there's literally street festivals that pay thousands of dollars that give yeah. you the same sort of visibility. And you know, that's what I do with my clients first thing when they're trying to start doing bigger profile gigs is, you know, I start small regional festivals, fairs and things like that and build out from there. It's just, it's just part of the process of working, having goals that are achievable and also presenting yourself in a way to achieve those goals. Yeah. And for me, this being kind of my second go around you know, now I've got young kids at home. I can't just get in a van and go anymore. Yeah. It needs to be, I need to tour smart, not just tour hard. You know, I, I paid my dues. I did the tour and hard part. And, and now it's time to time to tour smart and figure out ways to, to land those big gigs and balance them out with, you know, opening for bigger acts, uh, you know, taking less money, obviously, for, for things like that and, and making it work for me, but also, you know, making sure I can afford having the best band around because I pay them well enough to, you know, keep yeah. them out, you know, th Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, when, I, when I'm when i choosing clients to work with, you're kind of the exact candidate of someone I'm looking for, someone who knows how to do it on their own. And I'm just on the team to kind of streamline the process. You know, I think people sometimes get confused with team members that they're a cure-all or an instant fix. All they can can do is make you stronger and if you have a clear idea of how to do these things and what you want it just makes it a lot easier for everyone you know i think earning yeah. those hours is an important part of building your career always you know aligned yeah, objectives go a, a really really long way when talking about your team of when you know the hey let's make this magic thing happen here and it's like the the expectations have to really really align and and that can be like hey we have big expectations and the other person on the team is like yeah me too we all have this or it's like let's go it's just about aligning that i think the other thing too that i think about not specifically for festivals but just industry wide is to remember career tra trajectory for everyone else on the industry side i think about those small like the smaller festivals and things like that and i think about the buyer for those festivals and i think well what are their career goals right like where do they want to be they obviously want to buy for bigger festivals so as far as relationships go, the person buying for the, the really well-known festival already has all their relationships of who they want to work with. So, but they're going to move up. Everyone's trying to move up or burning out. That's, 
I mean, that's what's happening. So when the person who's buying for the state fair or buying for, you know, the, the town square festival, when an opera, you know, thinking about what are their career goals, they're planning on moving up too. I've seen this, the, the easiest place to see this has always been in press, you know, of like a, a journalist who writes a blog and then they get a job at, you know, Rolling Stone and you're like, boom, there it is. And that's how quickly that jump can happen, you know? Yeah. Like in a day, because yeah, I can't tell you how many, you know, yeah, and I can't tell you how many times there's been the guy that booked the Anderson County, South Carolina, like you know the county fair, and you know he's got you playing on a he's got Tuesday you. night, and the next thing you know, you know, two years later, you get a call from the same dude because you've done a few of those gigs for him, and uh, he's like, hey, you know, I'm doing a you know a club at the or I'm doing a show at this you know bigger club, and I've got so and so coming, and we need an opener, and I saw you're playing Greenville tomorrow, you know, do you want to do the, the show for 500 bucks but it'll be sold out and you're like yeah you know so and that's how i've gotten a lot of my you know opening acts over the years is people totally. that i've done you know little little festivals and street festivals like lee was saying uh you know whether it's you know in greenville south carolina or you know lawrenceville georgia or wherever it may be you know yeah uh, and just keeping in touch with those people yeah it's all it's all upward trajectory and i love that well we're gonna listen to a little bit more music here so connor stay on and and we want uh, we want some feedback here, so we're gonna jump over. I'm gonna pull up the submission here, and we've got all right, Paige King Johnson. This is Paige King Johnson. Their elevator pitch to us is: my main goal with music is to keep it authentically me and authentically country. As long as I continue to achieve those two things, I will remain satisfied and happy on this journey, no matter where it takes me. All right, without further ado, Paige King Johnson. Just like a man To forget every birthday And leave you hanging on the line Wondering if he's gonna say I love you Ain't it just like a man To show up late to the party Expecting you'll be ready to leave on his arm soon but ain't it just like you coming in from a long, hard day? Dirty hands wrapping around my waist. Baby, tell me what's happened since I left this morning. And ain't it just like you to be so patient? Even when I'm driving you crazy to know what I want to say before I think of things. Right, and that was Paige King Johnson. Paige King Johnson. All right, take us in, Lee. What are we thinking on this? One, uh, I'll talk about continuing on our conversation. This is a relationship business, as we established. I will always remember Paige because uh, she was the volunteer coordinator for the venue that I was booking during a Tin Pan South Festival. She just did an awesome job. She knocked it out of the water. And I will always remember her and give her every opportunity because of that. So you, ne you never know. Get involved with things. You never know what can come of it. Yeah, it's a good song. You know, it's it definitely has that kind of songwritery hooky sort of thing that as concise through the whole the whole uh the whole video to me if i if i was watching it i think the storyline is a little distracting but you know that's just because i'm looking for to look at you as a performer and not really as a product i thought the video was overall well done and the song is really nice cool man oh i love i love just the connectivity of everything going on lee just knows everyone uh connor what do you think uh what's some what's some peer-to-peer -peer thoughts on this song here well before i even get to the song like uh it, it occurred to me when you said it and i had read it in in a previous email uh about this song you know I just want to keep it keep it authentic and keep it country and and i wish i had had kind of that narrow a view because you know my whole career we've been trying to trying to define what kind of music i play and it's like okay i you know she 
when you come in with this, I play country, you've got a target to hit. And, you know, I like yeah. that. I like setting, setting goals that are, you know, that you can, I don't know, that you can say, yes, I've accomplished this or, or no, yeah. I haven't. And yeah. Kind of hold yourself Clear accountable. And concise. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, on the song, the song was cool. I was struck by how, like how sparse the production was. It was like a lot of moments where it was really just like, just a guitar and, you know, and, you know, a little bit of a beat and, uh, you know, it was cool. Camera work is really nice. I did have some storyline questions too. I was like, wait, is he in the picture or paintings or is he the painter? Anyway, but you know, whatever. Like everybody these days, I was watching the video and you know, somebody's yelling something from the other room and I'm answering. So, you know, this maybe, you know, you like I missed a key moment of the video or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I did have some storyline questions, but overall it looks really nice. It does the song justice. Uh, the song's cool. So yeah. I think, I, I, I think we're touching on, on, on huge stuff here that like sometimes just we've talked about goals and goals and goals and goals and goals and it's like when even talking about your music video what's the goal of the storyline what's it accomplishing you know artistic integrity is very important that if it has a message make sure you're you're getting that message across and then also thinking about you know is it adding i liked this song and i i, I like the artist i i totally agree on being able to say i want to be authentically country you no know, songwriter and being able to confidently say I've accomplished this I think that's huge and I think that you know in in where we're at right now with live shows and stuff being a little strange what's going to happen next that singer songwriter thing like Lee how you know kind of how you put that is there's a lot of viability for that all the live streams lend very well so that authenticity that the artist is going for also conveniently works really well over live stream works very well in patio restaurant settings, which might be a first place where live music might return rather than packed venues. So lots of opportunity for, for Paige there. And yeah. she's obviously doing a great job networking and building yeah, relationships. As, as Connor said too, the fact that the, the uh, production is so sparse at times really speaks to how good of a performer she is as a, so, a solo singer-songwriter. Yeah, it's, really yeah, it's a really nice bed for her for her vocals. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's clear what, what it's about. You know, it, this is, there's not like a virtuous a guitar player in the band the song is about this singer you know and it's built totally. around her so that's that's nice love it love it well thank you both for jumping in practice the pitch i want to sign off with with any either one piece of advice that you want to give or one thing that you're excited about in the in the coming days go ahead lee uh, i guess the only advice i would give is shoot your shot take any chance you can you know people are afraid to send emails and send a pitch what's the worst that can happen nothing you, you can not get, get not responded to you know the only way you can get an opportunity is to create it so shoot yeah. your shot i guess love it connor yeah for for me uh i'm i'll give you one of each i'm really excited this week we're finally getting on stage with with a uh while wow, socially distant a, an actual live audience and it's the first time in 362 days that that's happened yeah. So it's uh, it's real exciting, and and we're uh, you know we're getting doing the whole live stream thing, but but you know to have the whole band and, and an actual audience, uh, I'm I'm over the moon, man. So that's uh, that's, that's awesome. gonna be exciting. But uh, a piece of advice, and I wish someone had like slapped this into my head when I was younger. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an <laughs> asshole. Uh, and uh, I have violated that rule time and again. And uh, you know just because you're killing it right now, or you got a, got a song that's on you know videos on CMT or whatever uh still don't be an asshole yeah dude I sorry i said it. that three times on your show it's good no three <laughs> three is key uh no i love it i love it we all have been guilty of being assholes a time or two and but i think uh, I don't know. My my advice is like, don't be afraid to be yourself and stand up for yourself. As, as for sure, for sure. I love I love what you said about uh, knowing your worth and and going for it and working hard to prove your prove your worth and and then just don't don't be an asshole. And so with that, yeah. we'll we'll sign off, y'all. Thanks so much. Let's practice the pitch. Viewers, go to practicethepitch.com. We got a few more episodes in season one, so let's get it. All right. See you next time. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.